Hi. I'm here one day after National Digital Learning Day. I don't know yep. if you all knew that yep. or not. Yep. <laughs> so My we're going to present told me that. just a brief presentation on our uh, digital learning initiative uh, and what we're doing. First thing we want to talk about is um, smarter balanced assessment. This is um, we're, we're running. Mr. Hansen might be able to uh, give us a little more information too. Smarter balanced will eventually replace what we know as the MAP test, um, and we are we were selected to be a pilot at the middle school. We'll, we will begin that pilot in just a, a, about a week and a half with the seventh grade communication arts, um, and then sixth grade will follow after that in March. So we're looking at that as an opportunity to test many different things. Our students taking that, that grade level, taking an online assessment, which they've never done before. It's always been pen and paper. I would like to be able to demonstrate that our bandwidth has the capabilities to uh, a little concerned about that with just daily usage going on. And now we'll have online, uh, online testing, um, <clears throat> as well as the equipment that we have and the facilities, just the actual number of computer labs that we have at the middle school to be able to accomplish what we're trying to do. Uh, that will eventually push down at, at many different levels. So we're, we're anxious to test out this new um, online testing assessment. We had our first WebEx training today with the folks from Smarter Balance talking to, there's, uh, they're testing around a million kids nationwide with this pilot test. I left uh, with the uh, feeling that this is certainly a pilot test because they do not have everything worked out. They have training modules for teachers. And as you see in that window, we begin testing uh, in February. And they're hoping to get the training modules out open <coughs> soon. And, <laughs> and the schools on the web, WebEx said that would be really good if you would get those soon. So this is going to be a learning uh, experience for us. And this is not just, when we say computer testing, this is not just clicking multiple choice uh, on the computer. This is, uh, there are actual teacher lessons for the class tied into this assessment where teachers will present a lesson and then kids will move to assessment. And it's more than multiple choice. It's, it's building answers, constructing answers. It can be sorting things in the proper order, moving the sequence in the right order. It can be building graphs and charts, um, working with tools on the computer. So it's a high level assessment. Um, we're obviously, I guess excited is the right word uh, to be a part of this pilot. It's um, it's a good chunk of testing time. It's two to three hours per grade level, uh, and it's getting them into the computer lab to do it. But we hope to learn a lot and be and understand this testing a little bit better. And as Ginger said, we're also interested to see if our how our equipment holds up. Mm. Yeah. So, so, and so the result. Yeah, sure. this, so this isn't a technology question, but is are these the results that count? Or no, is this these sort are of not. A, this is a test all around, this a, right? This is a test all around. So this say, is this not, isn't this going is to go on our map. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Definitely a pilot. Yeah. Right. Okay. Pilot in all senses of the word. Pilot in if all senses of the If the whole system words. crashes, it doesn't matter. The, kid, really the kids get to do it again. <laughs> right. They may care. They will <laughs> care a lot more care, than us. For it doesn't this care test. for our assessment. That's right. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. This is a learning experience for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and I also took this, this second section here, I took from their website, because this is, and I wanted to point out, this is the <coughs> first time ever I have ever seen that a supported system includes iPads. Mm -hmm. We have never seen that before in Android as well. But iPads um, are of particular interest because we've always been told that due to um, not having flash, that they wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to test. This is the first time, again, this is their pilot, so I'm not sure once we actually <laughs> see what's real live, if that will be, but um, I, I, iPads are supported, but Google Chromebooks, which we're kind of looking at a little bit too, are not. So that was just, that's, that was interesting information to find out. Um, so who's smarter, a s smarter balanced smarter balanced consortium? consortium. There are two and major consortium in the United States, uh, Smarter Balanced and I can't pull the name of the other one. But it's a multi-state consortium uh, that was put together under federal grant money to get together to write a new assessment aligned to the Common Core. Missouri elected to be a part of this Smarter Balanced consortium okay. of states. And that's just the name of the consortium states. We have a we have a person from the department who handles assessment, sits on 
the group that is writing this assessment and building it. Um, so it's a consortium of state people uh, working together to write this assessment that we would give in several states. There's 32 states? I think that that's right. right. There are some states that belong to both consortium and will make it a sit. PARC is the other one. I don't remember what PARC stands for, P-A-R-C-C. Um, but they'll make a decision on what assessment they want to give. Hmm. Now, it's, I guess, one little detail here. It has not been figured out how Missouri is going to afford the smarter balanced <laughs> assessment. This is a new generation of assessment, and with it becomes a new generation level price uh, to giving it. So they are working on that, and the message that we're getting is they're more confident that they'll be able to find a way to make this work out than they were before, but it's still not fixed yet that we'll be able to afford this assessment. So every student in the seventh grade English will take part in this? Which is basically every seventh grader, because mm -hmm. every seventh grader has an English yeah. class. So with every seventh grader. And I guess we we'll have to grader. let parents know that they're Do we have a, a parent letter as part of their documents that we'll send out? Because since this is the pilot, then we'll turn around in April, right, Craig? And, and then they will we'll yeah. map test. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little, get them in the... Well, I think it's good that we we, uh, we do these things. I think it shows leadership in the state, and I think there's all kinds of great reasons yeah. for doing it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness in College Careers. Okay. That's the second. That's PARC. Yeah, That's PARC. <laughs> and Jamie, I did put the link to smarterbalance.org if you wanted to find out more information about about what they are. So this will, the, the easy trying. answer is it'll be what eventually like, replaces our map. That's right. Assessment. Thanks for going back to that sure. slide. <laughs> okay, and then uh, next week we have an exciting opportunity um, as we talk about our one-to-one -one initiative. I don't have slides for this, so I'm just going to talk to you guys. Um, there's a group of 10 of us from Rolla that are attending the um, CSD, Cooperating School Districts, has a Midwest Educational Technology Conference next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Like I said, there's 10 of us. Um, that's teachers, our instructional technology staff, and our network administrator and I will go up. We've gone for the last few years, and it is a great opportunity for us to, um, the focus this year is mainly one-to-one. -one. So we're gonna be able to talk with our colleagues, um, and then I also am gonna take that opportunity to visit with the school districts that we want to go do our site visits at, finalize those dates, who we're gonna be speaking with, and get our group, our con contingency of RALA staff to uh, Winsville and either Lindbergh or Parkway. Um, they're doing a BYOD. So we need to see BYOD because we're not, it'll be difficult for us to assess whether we want to bring your own device. Bring your own device, yeah. BYOD. It'll be difficult for us to assess if we want to provide a, a district provided device or bring your own device if we've not tested that at all here. And we don't, other than now we're allowing students to interact if the teacher um, believes that it's you know necessary in the class time, they can bring out their phones. But as far as a tablet or, or a laptop, we're not doing that currently. So we're going to go visit some schools who have launched that, see their growing pains and how what they've gone through to make that successful. Um, and then also, uh, Winsville has done a very successful um, implementation of netbooks at their high school level. So we want to see them you know, have um, a pretty good relationship with their technology department. And uh, we're, we're excited next week to get some great information and go to some really good sessions. I was looking uh, just next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so. And I'll just throw it, for the last four years, it snowed while we were there, and snow days back here, so I'm predicting snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has snowed the last four years. The teachers that go with me are always grumbling, but they're. <laughs> <coughs> next, we want to talk a little bit about my big campus. I think Nancy passed out to you all mm -hmm. your login information. Yep. This is just a, we want to talk about, just really quickly, how you can use it for your school board use. So right now, I think the last time we presented, we sent you all, and I sent you an email about how to see a public group. Mm -hmm. um, now you all have logins for my big campus. You're on the, you can actually log in. Uh, Brenda and I have added you to some groups, just uh, some that are pretty active, so you can log in and see just uh, the communication that's happening throughout the district in different buildings with different teachers, with um, being used as announcement pages, uh, junior high student resources things like that. So we have added you to some groups. Once you log in, you'll see some activity of what's going on. We're just we're, Our future plans 
are to take this next step further. And after we provide you some training, either maybe prior to a board meeting or a 7.30 training with Brenda, we would like to take this a step forward, forward and use it as an alternative to board docs so that we can take that, that electronic step forward. But right now, we'll just give you the double-sided handout tutorial to let you get used to using my Canvas. Get your feedback on it, set a date for some future training, and, and take that a step forward if you're ready. I got two questions. Okay. Where'd you get the picture of me? Um, <laughs> it's on the website. And why are we? Why? Why am I a student? Is that the only? Uh, there's only there's um, only so, so many classes. There's only Groups? there's certain levels of student teacher uh, network person. Oh, I want to be a network so, person. A network. <laughs> yeah. There's just different the levels of activity. You're not qualified to be a teacher. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> definitely true. So we can we can get into the bulldog page and yeah, yeah. I I'm just I just could be on the blog I can blog. I'm gonna yeah, start yeah. blogging. This is interesting. You like the athletic page? We gave you just kind of a sample. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So you can. It's also um, obviously this is gonna be a tool as we take that next step forward for you all to use it as that board docs alternative. But it's also so that you can see every time we talk about my big campus, okay. and you know Brenda hopefully could present at MSBA. What is she gonna present? We want you all to see what what. what what our students are using, if we're right, we're using that in a lot of your classes. We just wanted to see how our teachers are interacting with it and how big of a piece of um, this instructional technology plan that we have, how big of a piece my big, camp my big campus fits into that puzzle. I have heard so much many good things about this, about my big campus, and some of the things that some of the teachers I've talked with, the things they're doing, and the students are so proud of what they're posting. The students, they say they're just like amazed when they see their stuff there that they can well, share. They can share. I mean, it's just you know, amazes me. It, it amazes me that they can do that. What's, what's been really your, using it. What's been your experience with, with My Big Campus? Um, well, for a lot of classes, it's been really helpful, like having video casts, like if you miss a day for sports or anything, to just get on and watch what you've missed. Mm -hmm. And keys to like homework assignments or reviews for tests have been really helpful. Like the one glitch is with um, documents. My English teacher always says, never save it on my big campus because it always gets your document. It, so it doesn't. <laughs> so we always <laughs> like to save it. Yeah, there was a, in my big campus, there was a perfect storm. Um, and they did send out an apology, and it was it said it would never happen again. But it is technology, and it's not infallible. But it did happen. I'm not sure te which teacher that is. So now we can they go probably should have asked me. Yeah. Doggy, doggy, my homework. Yeah, probably. Doggy, my homework. Maybe that's what the yeah. no. cyber doggy, my homework. Well, and my campus has continued to improve drastically over the last um, two years. You know, they went. They reported a year ago. April that they were at like a million users, you know, and now they're mm -hmm. over two and a half million, close to approaching three million users in less than a year <coughs> just because of all the one-to-one -one initiatives and digital learning initiatives that are going on across the nation that it is that one tool right now that really has everything that schools are looking for. So I hope you guys um, really look at how you can join some other groups. I, I think you should see when you log in a classroom page. I gave you um, rights or have the teacher accept you to a an eighth grade English page, and you may not see that till tomorrow, maybe. Um, a, one of our fifth grade pilot pages, um, you know, if you want to join Mrs. Hammond's chemistry page, and just kind of look at how the teachers are using it. Also, um, don't be afraid, because you might get uh, assigned some of their homework. If you click on schoolwork, there's actually a pass due assignment. Exactly. <laughs> I know. So don't, don't, start, don't bring it to a sweat or something. Can, we, can we submit our artwork? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great pleasure in not turning it down. <laughs> well, you know, last, last uh, two weeks ago, you heard from Katie and from Christy about the things they were doing mm -hmm. at the junior high, and, and we thought, mm -hmm. well, now it's time to take the next step with you. And we had talked about board docs in the past. It seems like that's antiquated yeah, and, and it not even appropriate to what we're trying to do now. So it, we, we thought that as, as, as you are comfortable in interacting with it, it, it is really powerful. It, there's a lot. A we lot still have growth with it to come. Yeah. Um, and, and, Lynn and I have been working on getting the middle school students, um, not just our pilot teachers now. We've been working since Christmas on getting fifth, sixth, and seventh graders on board. Um, it, again, it comes to the availability of devices 
you know, the computer labs are booked all the time. The teachers are excited, have ways that they want to do it, but just getting a device available for them to be able to yeah. use it. But, it, you know, at least getting the kids familiar with it now, it will continue to just keep growing is the way I see it. So, so when I look at, like, the library here, and there's all these categories, social science, science, language art, you click on one of those, there's tons of... Exactly, and it where grows, does, it grows every come, second. Where do those come from? Those are teacher-posted educational videos from our district or from or from every no it's from any my big campus educator wow. does yeah, it I mean, so some great stuff here amazing yeah. things that you can just learn from that library and it's so much better than teacher tube or the educational youtube really this is you know that the only people that have eyes on what you're seeing there Keith is educators i mean only school districts have rights to my big campus so if something is inappropriate, it doesn't stay on there very long. If something someone I'm happened to post people. something, the people at my big campus are good about taking it off, and somebody's probably already found it and reported to them, and it comes mm -hmm. right off. So who runs or owns this? Is this Lightspeed out of California, and that's our content filtering company. Okay. And so it, and it's just a, it's a free portion of Lightspeed. Okay. So. so school district joins it. And uh, we just, purchase Lightspeed. We purchase it. It's a, it is our content filter, and uh, <coughs> okay. so. We purchase, it's, it's just part of the package. Right, okay. The school districts can join it for free, and that's why they've grown so much, because <clears> they <throat> hope that people will buy their other products when they find out how good this is. They'll look at Lightspeed for other avenues of things that they need for their technology. Will there come a time where they'll max out the number of users and then that becomes an issue, or just remains to be seen? Right now, they are hiring more people and adding more servers, and okay. I mean, they're trying to accommodate it. I think Brenda, we've been recognized as a district that's utilizing it a lot more than most. Yes, yes, when we that's posted our call. to Brenda and Linda. And you know, because we came on board, you know, you remember like yeah. three or four years ago, I right. came on board just sampling it out with a small group, you know, testing it, watching it in development. Mm -hmm. So that's been exciting to be on board from the very beginning and know how much better it's gotten along the way. They're very receptive to any... Uh, suggestions that we make about improving their product. It's probably the, mo the most receptive company that I've ever worked with. You can suggest something and within maybe a week and a half, sometimes you see software implementation. You never see that from technology companies um, implementing suggestions. So um, they are very receptive and they have made this product uh, continually making it a better product. Hmm. Every month that they release a webinar about what their updates are and they keep all of us, the trainers involved in suggestions and making it better, so it's great. Yeah, the kids have to do homework through it, so, you know, as, <laughs> that's sometimes disadvantage, you know, because they still have to do homework, but it's assigned through there. We do want to point out one thing in your tutorial is to make sure that you choose the right school. You need to, and it's in, it's on your, your tutorial. There is a Rolla, Kansas. There's actually two Rolla public schools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the district one, the yeah. one that I Make sure you, you do the Rolla public schools, and in parentheses it says district office. So make sure you choose the right school or you I won't mean, have access. I, I, I just I've never Rolla seen. Schools and Rolla public schools and I've never seen one like this. Well, it's sometimes it looks. The Jayhawk pops up in the wrong. It looks a little different on an iPad sometimes than you know on a PC. Right. And there is an app. You know, for my big campus, that will look a little different than what you're seeing through Safari on your iPad. Mm -hmm. So it's worth kind of playing around with it. Downloading the the app is free, so download it and play around and see what the kids see. I think it's good for you guys to kind of see what they're viewing also. And the more activity, the more groups you grow, you add to your account, the more active you're going to have in my or you're going to see feed in my big campus. And we would like to schedule further training with you soon, so that. Yeah. One page you guys all have rights to is the iTeach mobile device page. So not every teacher in the district has rights to that page, but that's where we run in and post training materials for the teachers that are testing the pilot program. And there's just looking at the discussion boards for the Tech Help page and the iTeach page will give you some ideas on how our teachers are using that. And you'll be able to see some sample projects that the students are doing. So one place for us to put all that. Do you guys have any questions? It's amazing. Huge, yeah, it's it. There's a lot going on in my opinion. Sure Mrs. Cavender is up to. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, oh, really? we'll figure out what board meeting we can maybe come 30 yeah. minutes early and, and get down here and have mm -hmm. Brenda walk you through some. It's kind of some of the stuff the administrators have been doing too. We've got to get back to some of that. There's chemistry too. Okay. BYOD. Yeah. BYOD. Yeah.
Okay. This is this is. Uh, what all devices? W can you bring a Kindle Fire? As long as it has an internet browser and you can get out, it, it, you can use any device. And really, that is our tool for saving things on an iPad. You know, when we have at the high school, we may have 20 different kids that use the same iPad because they're going from one science class to another science class to the German class to the social studies class. <coughs> so they have to have a place to save their final products when they are finished with something. Well, the Many of the apps that Lynn and I choose, we specifically choose because they talk directly to MyBay Campus. You know, there's an open end, MyBay Campus, as their final product. And the kids can just log in through the app of MyBay Campus, and it will just put it into their your stuff. And then they can post it on a discussion, however the teacher wants hmm. them to hmm. connect. Pretty great. Training my flip phone. Very good. A lot of training still happened, but we're making progress. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think we've got more to talk about. <laughs> I, know, I just appreciate everything that's been done. I hope you do too. We've come a long way in less than a year. You know, we just passed the technology plan and then we rebuilt the organization, which are how far we've come. Linda's been a huge help in Mark. I know. Huge help. Linda, heard her speak too. She was, they're busy. They're busy folks. <laughs> A lot happening. So we just want to give you a quick update on a few things that have happened. We have um, rolled out two laptop carts at the high school, each with 30 laptops in them. And you'll see on the left side, we're testing out, turning out two different types of carts. One is $1,000 more than the other cart. But you know, it has some features to it that um, enhance it, of course, you know, for that amount of money. I have the one on the left is in Dwight Warnke's classroom um, on the first level in the high school. So at any time, you guys, I, mean, I think it's a good thing if you ever want to stop in and ask him what he's doing with it because he is, that one is being housed in his room and he's using it a lot with MyBay Campus. I'm going to show you another website that he's using and, and some LabQuest probes and things that we have. On the right then are, on the far right is the laptop cart that the junior high got rolled out uh, a week, week and a half ago. Um, I talked to Monica Fulton about how to best utilize that cart with only one cart in the building. My suggestion was that we target the um, English department. They have been on board with um, my big campus all this year. All of them have been and have been over the years, the last couple of years, trying to do more writings via the computer, just more research via the computer. And it's easier for me right now to monitor that group and to support those teachers and make sure that it is being used effectively. And so that was agreed upon right now. And so just the Com Arts teachers at the high school are the main. Um, you mean junior high? Junior high, sorry. The junior high are using that one. And then the other one at the high school is a checkout for the rest of our pilot teachers. So they now have the iPad cart and the laptop cart to utilize. Okay, so I just threw you some pictures out here, just kind of see the kids using it um, in Dwight Warnke's room. On the bottom right is Karen Hammond. Uh, the science department was really excited. They bought LabQuest probes yeah, that now they can feed their data directly into the laptops. Um, for, they have all different kind of probes, so they are just getting ready to test all that out, but they're very excited to get live, real-time data for kids to analyze, and I think that is huge for our college prep students going on to have access to that. I get excited watching it all happen. Okay, so Nancy, if you'll just put it here, just a 30-second clip. This is a My Big Campus assignment in Christy Dalton's classroom at the junior high. The worksheet, but it's a worksheet, work like malicious. Google it. Laptop card. Go to www.dictionary.com. Okay, if you don't know the meaning of a word, I really don't want you to have books at your desk because the desk, it, this area is so small. And since we have such a wide variety of things available to us on the internet, I want you to go to dictionary.com to look up words that you're not sure the meaning of, and it's not on the worksheet. Okay? I pointed out, you know, the desk size is something to consider yeah. there, yeah, trying to have a little desk with that laptop on there. So they've done a great job at the junior high getting them started on it. You know, the kid, teachers, it's a whole new thing to have those devices to take care of too. So I think our support is definitely necessary. 
So I just wanted to end tonight with just giving you a couple new sites that we're using and just some new ideas on how the kids are using it. The left one is called Quizlet, and that's become um, the flashcard-based tool that Linda and I are supporting in the district right now because I think it's better to have kind of a common tool that the kids are used to. And, and this tool allows kids to just review in different forms before a test, you know, and I strongly believe that instead of a piece of paper just with a bunch of words on that, if they have multiple ways that they can type in their vocabulary, they can hear their vocabulary, they can take a practice test, they can play a game, there's five or six multiple ways and there's a free app for it so they can do it then on their smartphones at home once they learn how to do that. And then the other one is called Infuse Learning, and if you remember our good old clickers that we're still using throughout the district, well, um, one goal Lynn and I had this year was to find, we have the iPads, you ought to be able to use an iPad like a clicker and get that response. Well, Infuse Learning is what does that right now, and it works both on PCs and iPads, or teacher has a PC, kids have iPads. It's very, very simple. The kids just type in a room number and their name, and they're connected. Teachers can ask verbal questions. Kids can draw pictures and as a response. They can type in text. They can do multiple choice, true, false. There's all kinds. I'll give you a demo on that My one. My calculator app. My script yeah. calculator. So that, that's a huge tool that we've just been working on in the last month or so, but having the, the devices and being able to make sure that all your kids are engaged as you're working along. You've been reading a lot about technology and special needs kids, special ed kids. Can, can maybe we schedule one of these updates, because I love these, that, that talk a little bit about how we're using technology to support the SPED population? Absolutely. We have um, a small population of our speech language yeah, pathologists I mean, I using them. We have Me too. Um, some <laughs> coming. Sorry. They both. Have we have both at all. There you go. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, we have. Um, we have uh, at Wyman, we're getting ready to add, I think, three or four. Stacy had written a grant, um, so we're getting ready to add, and then four or five at the middle school, too. There seems to be a lot of research around autism Here. spectrum and, and technology, and, and that, how you can really connect with those. Those kids. iPads, the, the apps that they have for the, those classes, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So the um, Sue Tucker at the junior high has done a, a great job identifying some of the apps for those. Lead, uh, they, you know, they've all picked out apps, but she's done a great job. With that, so yeah, so maybe one of the updates we can talk sure. about that because I think that's a unique population mm -hmm. where we really use this to. Well, and this is the simplicity of an iPad. Yeah. That's where the iPad has an advantage over a laptop. They both have their strengths, definitely, but there's nothing technical to do right. on an iPad. The kids can turn it on very simply. Finger simple. is the, yes. the tool, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's amazing to see the, student, the students using those. And the engagement at all levels, you know, the discipline problems just. Pretty much, the kids are taking respect of it. Our Ginger and I were talking today with our. Uh, we've had the iPads, um, you know, rolled out since the beginning of school. Those two cards and knock on wood, you know, they're all still three. Working. We have three. We have the one at Truman as well. We've oh, not yeah, had any. Nothing's been dropped. Or no we, we have. We no. But we, you Thanks. know, we, we all trained them all how to handle well, the iPads. Nice we did invest uh, cases, cases too, nice yeah. protective cases yeah. for them too. I mean, we knew that if we just put them out in something that you know, like you guys carry, just for your practical use, uh, it wouldn't work. But they needed something to have a good, you know, protective cover. So we did invest. Uh, the, those covers are like sixty dollars a piece, so it's a yeah, little it's a more. Good investment. It, 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 is, it absolutely is. Well, and we have policy in place now. You know, how you put them in the carts and how you take them out. There's, it's not just haphazardly done. So I think that that all helps to have some structure. How many devices? How many devices do we have in each town? Oh, what? Yeah. Like now, what do you mean? Like <laughs> iPads or just? Everything we're trying right now. How many? On carts or in labs? Or yes. How many total devices? We have with the three I, with the three laptop carts that we put out within the last month. Um, we are probably over 1,900 devices right now. Includes teacher computers, PCs. sorry, whatever okay, device. I'm sorry, uh, now, yeah. iPads, we have three mobile carts, all the administrators have them. We're at about 125 iPads throughout the district, maybe 130 with some of the, the special in coming. Um, but we've put out three laptop carts as well. Um, and then, you know, we just had 1,800, um, right around there, just PCs throughout the district. So. Yeah, I, I guess I was meaning in the hands of students and teachers using them. 
What's the difference between a mobile device? I mean, our teachers are still going to the labs and right. they still have all, right. Right. except at Truman. I mean, they both, Truman still has the iPad card and the netbook card only, so that's their only choice is the mobile devices. But we still have our hardwired labs in the other buildings. We're certainly getting a large enough number. We're starting to get a feel of how it's working and, and how well the kids are taking care of them and all that. So that, that's are. what I was looking at. We are. And the great thing, Brenda gave me some uh, positive news today. You know, we invested a significant amount of money on our um, Aruba wireless solution this summer. And Brenda said throughout all the testing that we've done um, anywhere, we've not had any issues. And so we, we definitely made the right decision mm -hmm. with that. Um, and and that, that was a great choice. So we've not had any wireless. But it is. You know, it's the first thing when I go into a room, new room, I turn on 30 devices, are they all going to hit and work like we yeah. want them to work? And mm -hmm. it has. So that's now, great. I will say, those are 30 devices. Once we open this up, um, if, if, you know, if at some point we, Dr. Zalas is, is famous for saying that we're not Panera Bread. We're not just going to open it to where this is an educational network. It will always be an educational mm -hmm. network. It's not meant for people to come sit at the ball game and just surf the web. But if kids have access to that, which they will, they'll need to log into the wireless, their phones are going to be on. So yep. you might walk into a room and instead of 30 devices being connected, you might have 60 now. Yep. So yeah. we might start seeing some um, some saturation mm -hmm. of, of wireless, but we, we've put in place the backbone on yeah. that wireless to, to cover us. Like at the middle school where you have a team that's participating in the pilot, right? Three, like, three. three teachers. Yeah. Are, we measure, are we going to measure things in addition to uh, the kids and how they do academically. Are we, are we also going to look at like attendance <coughs> compared to another team without the computer's behavior, Good point. referrals and things like that? Is that going to be part of our evaluation too? Or it certainly can, can it be? And in one of our final meetings of the, the school year, we want to bring in at least two of those pilot teachers to come speak to you all and give you an update of how that has impacted their classrooms this year. And so when we do that, we'll also bring in some type of report to you just to show you if it has made any significant be interesting to see that one. difference. You know, I classrooms. asked uh, last week one of the teachers that was using the Quizlet review before the test. It was a very, you know, middle average science test or science class they had, you know, just to report from the previous test, because we didn't have any other way, how it improved, and the average went up 9, 10% by giving the kids that they were all engaged mm -hmm. independently instead of the teacher just lecturing the review, you know, that they were all have different modes for them to practice. So that was that was good. You know, it's hard to exactly measure. Dr. Zalis and I have talked about you know, measuring it concrete is, is hard sometimes. Yeah, you don't really have a control. One thing we're not, said, we, don't, we didn't really set up a controlled experiment. Yeah. yeah. One thing you said about um, Dwayne Orkey's having the uh, cart, but it's in his classroom. Is that That's nobody else can issue. use? That's a location issue. The other pilot teachers are all upstairs, and he's I the see. only one downstairs. So it's, it's a little bit of a logistics issue. Um, that cart, to get it upstairs, you go through a big portion of the building up through the elevator. and then So every time you're moving that cart around that far, yeah. It, it really, it's just he has it in his room because there's no one else in the pilot down there. If there was another teacher down there, we would be sharing it. But he uh, got lucky and he had it to himself. <laughs> Brenda and I did talk earlier about uh, maybe as the fourth quarter rolls around, um, some, choose some teachers in like maybe the math department because they're right there by Dwight. Um, and start, Brenda, give them some direction and, and test it out and some of the other, work with them in the math department too so that it's not just in Dwight's. Mm -hmm. but. For the time being, it's for the pilot. He's the only one down there. That's, That's kind of nice because he can give us some feedback with having the devices all the time in his room to just be able to pull them out and not worry about having to check them out to have one, like our fifth grade, because our fifth grade will definitely give you a different perspective than the high school now sharing a cart and making sure that they don't hog it because somebody else needs it. So for him to try it out for a month or two and to give all of his tests online and um, you know these, these reviews, the infused learning to make sure kids are engaged to try the lab questions. <coughs> It'll just be good to have that kind of feedback also. <laughs> Roughly one cart with, you know, the devices and the cases, what's it cost? About $20,000. Which is why we're testing several things. We want to get it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is, I got a great deal on those laptops. So they were, it was a, it was a special buy. One time, kind of HP, but there was a great deal on those. I, I, any, if we purchase, obviously, if we purchase in bulk, we'll get a great, a, a bigger discount. Uh -huh. 
the, those were about $560 a piece, and they are um, they're really high-end laptops. They're really nice. And we also, I don't know if you noticed, we've got the logo engraved on the back of them. Mm -hmm. So not only is that a little bit of um, marketing for all the public schools, if those are, you know, if, um, but it's also a theft deterrent. So it's a really nice logo. <clears throat> What's the sense from the, the students? I mean, do they, do they really recognize that, that there's a significant change going on with respect to technology, or are, are the students just sort of so used to it that... Well, in the beginning, it was kind of completely different. Like, I've taken quizzes online and stuff. Mm -hmm. First, I like, thought it was completely different. I didn't like it, but then, like, as teachers start using it more, you just get used to it, so it's nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. And it's been really helpful. Yeah. And Nick Curl, what were you saying about not saving? Well, I like some teachers or some kids have had problems with um, their documents disappearing. I think it just happened once, and everyone is just kind of scared of doing it mm -hmm. now. But I mean, I know people that still use like the online documents to do everything. So I, it's personal preference mm -hmm. for some people. But it's really helpful with clubs and stuff too to send out reminders and meetings and everything. Because I gave you guys um, instructions on how to get a text alert or an email alert when somebody has posted something on my big campus so that, you know, it just reminds you to look on there and see what's been notified. So Definitely uh, really a lot of growth. Not that we don't have a long way. We still have lots of improvements and training, getting teachers more on board. Uh, you know, because I think ICRA will attest to there are different spots, you know, where some teachers don't want it, don't want anything to do with it. Some you know, see the benefit of it, and it's just us keep showing them how to use it effectively, because it is a whole mind shift is what you'll learn from the teachers. I, the think, it, I think it is important to uh, look at data, though, on our, our kids doing better and, and, do and some of those other things, too. We can't just go by anecdotal no. stories to make these kinds of decisions, so I think that is important. Well, and, and our, our pilot teachers are very much aware of that, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about that every time about how we're going to measure that with it being classroom behavior, attendance, mm -hmm. test scores. I mean, it's not just for fun that we're doing right. this. Mm -hmm. What are we gaining from it? And, uh, so we hope to have something to report back to you. Great. The districts that you want to go visit, Lindbergh and Wentzville and Parkway, mm -hmm. do they use my big campus? Wentzville was looking at it. Wentzville was. They. Um, a lot of those districts. Wentzville is looking at it. But they had already <coughs> invested quite a bit in uh, Moodle. Um, is that Google Docs or what? No. Moodle is another learning management system, an LMS. So this is kind of an LMS. Um, and so there's people who have already, their teachers are all trained on Moodle or Blackboard or something like that. So they're a little, but Winsville was at a point where they needed to either upgrade Moodle and they were going to lose all of the documents that their teachers had stored anyway. They would have to do a complete upgrade and nothing was coming with it. Oh, or look awesome. at, because they already are a Lightspeed customer. So they could just implement my big campus for free. Um, it would just be a training, complete revamp of their training for their teachers. Um, I'm not sure what Park. I don't think Lindbergh is. Parkway, um, not, I'm not sure. Some of those other, Parkway had a huge instructional technology uh, department. They had one instructional technology person at every building. Um, last year they cut, I think, of like $8 million out of their budget, and they released every single one of those people with the exception of one. They're cutting another four. And another sure two another or four, yeah. Again this, yeah. yeah so week. I'm not sure what they're doing. Um, but BYOD is their, I mean, they're doing something. And so they're, they're, they have, this past year, they've implemented BYOD. Mm -hmm. So I know we've got a lot of schools ask us about it, you know, about using my big campus and how it works. Uh, Brenda presented at the Mornet conference in October, and one of the uh, one of the people sitting in attendance was um, the director, of the instructional CIO of Independent School District, um, Dr. Gloria Stevenson, and she went back to her district, and they are looking at purchasing Lightspeed now because of my big campus. And she came from Columbia; she's really well known in that area. Um, there are other several other larger Kansas City school districts now looking at Lightspeed and my big campus now too because. Um, and we've had several people call us now, even Lightspeed called and said, because of Brenda's presentation at the lake, it was a great presentation, um, that there's other customers now. That so what are they them. offering us? <laughs> yeah. Come on, Vicki, you need to get on to that. We need a finder's fee for every one of those. They just three years, and they gave us a pretty nice discount.
account for that. So. They should. We'll take a laptop cart with each, yeah. each district. Well, for every out. district that we can. Yeah. Hey, I got a t-shirt. There you go. Wear <laughs> <laughs> yourself too, Sean. I am, and this might be a difficult question to, to answer, but just in, in your sense, thinking of all the school districts in the state, I mean, I would say obviously we're well ahead of the curve, but are, are we way ahead? Are there still lots of school districts ahead of where we are, and, but we're gaining ground quickly, or how would you assess where we are compared to the average school district in Missouri? Great. I think that we are taking measured steps towards our, our implementation of this. There are a lot of districts that when iPads have been out for about two years now, and when they hit the market and, and districts, the, the marketing that they put forth on those, there are districts that just started buying them without a big plan in place. So mm -hmm. uh, to answer your question, I would say we're about middle of the road. There are lots of districts that have gone one-to-one, -one, but they went one-to-one -one maybe with a cheap tablet, mm -hmm. and now they're needing to go back and look at that. And I, guess, um, I, I guess it's how you would measure it because it is taking measured steps, in my mind, puts us way ahead of those school districts that just went out and bought a bunch of stuff but don't know how to use it. Or don't, don't have don't the staff, have the staff to, And their teachers to, aren't ready. Right. And that's the, that right. was the main, and that's still our, our main, it, it's, it, we've talked about this at the last meeting, you're glad that we didn't talk so much about the equipment. It's not about the equipment. Yeah. It's making right. sure our teachers right. are ready mm -hmm. so that, that we can, um, Roll this out to our students. It impacts student learning. I mean, that is our ultimate. But that 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 gets to Jamie. That gets to Jamie's point is, you know, it, just because you got everybody's got a device and they're sitting there in the classroom with an iPad, that's not that's not what we want. We want better attendance. We want better student performance. We want better engagement. We want better education. Exactly. That's the metric that we've got to keep keep our eyes on. And we may come back as a result of this pilot and the things that we've learned this year and say, you know, we're not quite ready yet. We yeah. need another year. And if the school calendar affords us to have a day every year of planned professional, a day every month, pardon me, of professional development and get our teachers mm -hmm. comfortable, add additional laptop carts or iPad carts or whatever we need to do, that might be our findings because we're not, maybe we're just at those measured approach, but we might not just be ready. And I don't know that we spend, um, just to have that device yeah. if we're not ready. Right. Yeah. But we may come back and, and It's and not about ready, the device. So. It's about it's the education. The yeah. yeah, the device is just, <clears throat> we've said this before, just one more tool. And culturally, in, in three to five years, it's what the kids it's what the kids are already doing. They're plugged mm -hmm. in 24-7. They come to school, <coughs> sit in the industrial model, turn yourself, turn everything off, and listen to what I have to say. Mm -hmm. can't be the way it is all the time. Or we will impact uh, negatively. Uh, how we connect with kids. There's still that place for that. I was asked the other day, are we still teaching handwriting? Well, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're still doing that, but you know, it, 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 it's just one more tool. It won't replace the teacher. It won't replace the need for a good relationship to, that, that maybe transcends the subject matter. It's about getting where they are. You know, just the cell phone, relaxation of the cell phone policy at the high school has been a really neat thing mm -hmm. to say to I was saying this to my class last night, they're all, you know, sophomores, freshmen in college, and a couple of them asked me, do you mind if I use my laptop? I said, well, yeah, you should have it out all the time. I said, you guys don't have a cell phone policy anymore? When I was there, you couldn't get it out. You had it under the table, and if I could text and got caught, you know, I got, well, that's the whole thing. It's you, those, those changes, the kids rise to that occasion. Mm -hmm. They've been very good about it at the high school. Uh, <clears throat> it's about showing them how to effectively use the yes. tool. That is what I feel like our job is. They know how to use the tool. Yeah. I mean, they think, you know, they know how to use the laptop, the iPad, but how to effectively use it right. to gain the information they need, they, we can all learn, keep learning on that. Mm -hmm. In every subject matter. Absolutely. And no matter what skill, I mean, Linda and I, this is our profession, and we still learn things every day with what we can do. It'll never stop. I don't know. You, you measure it at a point in time. But, you know, think where we were with, with uh, smart boards. Yeah. And what is a smart, we haven't mentioned the word smart board yet tonight. Uh -uh. You know, so we're just, it continues to move. But we saw that, we saw that positive <clears throat> shift in learning or student achievement or whatever, whatever word you want to use there. When we went from the whiteboard and in some cases the blackboard to more interactive smart board environment and you you grew up in the district as we went through that so yeah. I think I think again I think we need to see that sort of next incremental 
phase in. Phase yep. that knows we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not, it wasn't just throw 250 smart boards in classrooms, it was phase them in in the, in the core curriculum classes and now we're to the point where they're, they're almost in every classroom. How to use them effectively. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. professional development that went along with that was the key piece yeah. to that. Yeah. So it, Otherwise they were just whiteboards hooked up to projectors. And that's what these cards I yeah. would be. And it's, again, it's not about the equipment. It's not about the smart board. Or the it's not about the equipment. It's, it's yeah. teachers being ready and engaging our students in student achievement. Give them staff time to learn it and practice it feel comfortable with it. That's the, that's the tough one. So, so when do we learn what the next steps are and how that impacts uh, future budget? Gonna, uh, we'll keep this on the perpetual agenda for the board meeting because Ginger by next month will have gone to visit those school districts and talk about what we've learned from, from the others and, and uh, what we think our next steps should be based upon what we continue to learn. We'll, we'll also need to have the, the pilot participants here to talk with you about what they've learned during the process. I, was, I saw on my big campus, for example, where Steve had tried something and it didn't quite work, so they ended up back in the lab to make, you know, so they're learning and it's okay that they, it's not 100% successful. So we've. That's exactly right. It's okay to fail sometimes. You learn from that and go on. So and I think it, monthly. I think monthly. It's problem solving. I mean, that's what we, we have to do, figure out why it didn't work and we'll fix it. But, but you guys, you guys, at some point in the budget process here, are going to bring a, another recommendation for the next phase. Well, that reminded me that part of the, organization, the, the organizational chart, we put yeah. two yellow boxes in place, mm -hmm. uh, the, and there were several others, including job descriptions, that we were going to talk about over time. And it's, a lot of it's going to be based upon what we can afford, right. you know, afford to do, uh, and redeploying resources we currently have. That's how we got to where we, where we got. So we're having those discussions about. Uh, teacher, where we're going to need a teacher and not need a teacher may mean that we are able to afford to hire one more Linda and Brenda to add to the, uh, the elementary level. Uh, there's a whole lot there. So, but back to Jim's question, when, when are we going to know? Well, we'll know more about what devices and whether we're going to be YOD or one-to-one -one or a combination of both, you know, and, and what, what, uh, device we might lean toward. We'll know more about that this spring, but we'll, we'll keep it on the perpetual agenda. But that funding for that comes out of capital. Yes. And I, I have a concern that we get to a point that, you know, yep. can we afford everything we want to do? That's... <laughs> and student performance should be at the top of that. Great. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're doing, we're living within our means right now, and there's going to come a point where where our levy sits and what we're doing with that, it's going to it's going to stress that. There's no question. We're talking over uh, half million dollars to raise nine through twelve if we ever wanted to do a district provided. So we're I mean it is it's a big chunk of change. It is yep. it is, and so we uh, measured approach. We want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Obviously, with any amount of money, small or that large, we want to make sure that we're making the right choices. But it's like the smart board. We didn't make the wrong choice with the smart boards. It's just the technology is continuing to evolve. And so what we put in seven years ago, eight years ago, is maybe not the best technology now. It's still we're still using it. It's still effective. But it's there's newer technology. There's interactive. We don't have to drill into the boards. There's newer technologies coming out. It's just evolving. So with that significant amount of money, we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and, and we're prepared to make the biggest impact. And my concern is that when you're ready to make the impact, we have the funds available to support you. That's right. You know, we might say, it's, we come back and say it's a, it's a grade level. We do one grade level pilot next year. You know, we, we will come back very soon. Before, you know, it was the technology plan that we would talk in the spring, come to you in mm -hmm. the spring with, the, with um, some decisions. And I, I see us putting together a committee to talk about that before it's not just um, technology, you know, it's not just us. It might be the committee that goes to those other site visits. We put this group, of, this core group of people together and we, you know, we make some decisions and come back to you in the spring. That was our original plan. Very good. Thank you. Well, very technology much. is one of the patron inside questions. Mm -hmm. Do they feel we're doing enough? Is there more to do? That help guide some of what we talk about to help support it where we head from here on out, too. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Very interesting.